Tyson, why don't you start by telling our viewers about the different forms of human trafficking? Well, generally there's, there's three forms. Generally most people break human trafficking uh, into either labor trafficking, sex trafficking, or domestic servitude. Typically domestic servitude would be you know, the mail order bride, uh, nanny type of situation. And generally those are the most difficult victim to identify because they are not out in the community very much in the public eye where someone might see something suspicious and, and call a report or call in a tip. Uh, labor trafficking could cover any, any form of labor anywhere from, we've seen cases in Florida, obviously agriculture cases, we've seen um, hotel made cases, I think Boca Raton had a, uh, had a case that involved people working at a, at a country club. So it could really any form of labor um, could, could be labor trafficking and then sex trafficking would include prostitution, uh, stripping, uh, exotic dancing, even if they're um, not necessarily um, getting completely nude, like more of a, um, a parlor or something along those lines. Um, a massage parlor type of establishment could, if there's something sexual going on there, that could fall under sex trafficking. If it's just strictly massages, they could potentially be a labor trafficking victim. Okay. What would you say are some common misconceptions? Some of the biggest uh, misconceptions I would say would be uh, a lot of people believe that in order for human trafficking to occur that the victim needs to be from another country, which is not accurate. In anyone can be a victim of human trafficking. It doesn't matter male, female, adult, child. It doesn't matter if you are, you're a U.S. citizen or not. Anyone can be a victim of human trafficking. And then probably the second biggest the misconception would be there has to be movement for there to be a crime, which again is not accurate. Uh, someone could be a victim of human trafficking and never leave their home. Or just by going across the street or across town, they could be a victim. You don't have to cross an international border or, or even a state line to be a victim of human trafficking. Okay. Now I know that there are probably, there's probably a long list of indicators that someone is a victim of human trafficking. Could you give us the top indicators this morning? Uh, well, a lot of the indicators might be a bit sp specific to the form of human trafficking that they're a victim mm -hmm. of, um, but some of them would be um, maybe inability to make eye contact. If you're at a place of employment, regardless of what type, if you're not able to communicate directly with uh, an employee or if you try to start a conversation maybe like with your waitress or someone doing your nails, and maybe management comes over and kind of intervenes in the conversation a little bit or tries to answer questions on behalf of the employee. Whereas normally if you try to have a conversation with an employee, they might joke around with you a little bit or tell you where they're from. Uh, but the management might be responsible for kind of keeping the human trafficking victims in line and may not want the, the patron having a lengthy conversation where they might get suspicious. So they might come over and offer to translate if, if it's needed or they might just come over and stop the conversation or, or something along those lines. Um, security at the, the place of employment that is designed more to keep the employees in as opposed to keeping people from breaking in. That, uh, you know, that might be uh, an indicator. People who maybe live and work at the same location could be a red flag. Uh, people maybe who all the employees ride to work with management, stay at management's house and then ride back to work with management that could be a red flag. Some of those things by themselves might not mean anything, mm -hmm. but with other, a combination of, of red flags, they, they could be concerning. In sex trafficking, it's very common for uh, pimps or traffickers to tattoo the girls um, on their neck or on their upper chest with a, a street name or something like that as kind of a psychological control mechanism, you know, kind of like you're a piece of property, I own you, my name is own you, kind of a psychological mm -hmm. manipulation. Uh, signs of torture, um, you know, maybe a lot of cash and then not a lot of cash, a hotel room key. And again, some of those things by themselves might not mean anything, you know, but, you know, maybe they have a new tattoo, they don't want to tell you where they got it from, a new cell phone, they don't want to tell you who bought it for them. They don't typically have a lot of cash, now they do. They typically don't dress like this, and all of a sudden they have a new wardrobe. Think, things like that could be indicators of something's going on. Okay, and now if we do know people who have these indicators, who then would we tell? Well, you have, you have a couple options. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you believe, if you know that the victim is a child, or if you believe them to be a child, maybe you don't know for sure their age or birth date, 
If you believe it's a child, you're required by state law to call the Department of Children and Families Florida Abuse Hotline, just like you're required by law for any form of child abuse. And human trafficking is a form of child abuse, and DCF mm -hmm. does accept reports for human trafficking. So by law, you're required to call the Florida Abuse Hotline. Mm -hmm. If it's an adult, then you could probably call law enforcement directly. You could also call the Polaris Project, which, which runs the National Human Trafficking Resource Center, mm -hmm. which uh, they have a, a national number that you can call, which I believe is 1-888-3737-888. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now is there anything else that we can do down here in Monroe County to help prevent this from happening? Uh, I, w I would say educate yourselves. There's mm -hmm. a lot of information on the internet. The uh, Department of Children and Families has a, a very nice uh, web page with a lot of uh, human trafficking information on there. If you, if you Google human trafficking in Florida, uh, you'll, you'll get a lot of different uh, reports and PDFs that people have put together. The uh, Center for the Advancement of Human Rights at Florida State University has several PDF reports that they put together that are very informative about human trafficking here in Florida. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on the show this thank morning. Thank you for having me. I hope the viewers can get involved in the fight to stop human trafficking. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages.